more than 50 courageous Texas House Democrats uh, made the decision to leave Texas to stop Republicans, led by Greg Abbott, our governor, from passing a bill to make it harder for people to vote. We are here to protect the rights of, of Texans and protect their freedom to vote. And you have to understand, this special session is, is poison from the onset. So that's the Texas Democratic Caucus chair on MSNBC last night, held a town hall virtually, defending his group's decision to flee the state in order to block the Republican voting rights bill. That group unlikely to score a meeting with the president after a sixth lawmaker tested positive for COVID-19. Want to bring in Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff, Fox News contributor, Austin, Texas. Hello, Carl, to you. Hi, Carl. Congratulations to your home state with the liftoff there with Bezos and his team west of you. Uh, so um, how's this working out? They went from a page charter to a Zoom chat in Washington, D.C. Yeah, this isn't uh, working out very well, and it's because they're telling a falsehood. Chris Turner, the state representative you just featured, said the bill makes it harder to vote. That is an absolute outright lie. It expands the number of hours for early voting in Texas, both on weekdays and on weekends. It, it lowers the threshold that you're required to have early voting on weekends. Right now, counties, uh, we have 254 counties. Those with a population of 100,000 or more are required to have weekend voting. This lowers it to 50, those counties with 55,000 or more. So it expands more counties requiring early voting on weekends. Mail-in va verification, your mail-in ballot used to be signature verification. Now all you have to do is put your driver's license number, your state-issued ID number if you don't have a driver's license, or the last four digits of your Social Security card. And guess what? If you make a mistake, and they identify you've made a mistake, you have a time where you can cure your mistake by the phone, by email, or in person. So the idea that Chris Turner says that, they're, that, that it's making it harder to vote is wrong. What they're objecting to is this bill makes it clear that two practices are not allowed. Drive-through voting for people who, who can walk into the polls. Right now we have a state law that says you can vote in your car if you can't get into the polls unassisted. One county, Harris County, Texas, said we're going to let everybody drive through vote. And 24-hour voting, they, they took a weird interpretation of our state law that required a certain number of hours, minimum hours that they had to be provided for early voting, and instead said, well, that means we can have 24-hour voting. And on one day in Harris County, had 20, uh, on the 29th of October, they had 24-hour voting. And it, it doesn't have anything to do with higher turnout. Tarrant County, where Chris Turner lives... And where he was elected from does not uh, did not do 24-hour voting mm. and did not do drive-through voting for people who are able-bodied and can walk into the polls. And it had higher turnout than Harris County, the one county out of 254 that misinterpreted state law deliberately mm. and got away with it. Carl, one more quick question on that because I know we want to move on to another topic. But do you believe that those Democrats should prove their vaccination status? Uh, those that were traveling on that plane, obviously with their masks down, there were sending the message that they were vaccinated and I believe that they have said that they were should they have to prove it because we've ad nauseum ran, ran through the statistics and how unlikely it would be that that group would have six positive COVID tests as a result of traveling together. The, the, the point being with this variant I, we, we've been vaccinated and we want to know whether or not we're are we cool not to wear a well, mask said, and go in well public. here's the deal here, they were vaccinated. Members of the Texas House of Representatives during the legislative session had to be vaccinated and had to be tested. So every one of those people was vaccinated. It shows the challenge of the Delta variant. These people, I'm confident, were brought down with COVID and tested positive. They had uh, apparently cold-like sy symptoms because they were vaccinated. It, it meant that they didn't get, suffer severe uh, disease. They didn't go to the hospital, but they had cold-like cold symptoms. But yes, they, they, as a member of the Texas House of Representatives, they had to be vaccinated. Uh, Carl, quickly here, Wall Street Journal, here's the headline. Uh, we'll always have COVID. Call for number one, guys. Uh, we'll always have COVID. The Delta variant spooks markets, but the vaccines work even if the virus won't go away. Markets are rebounding today up more than 500 points in the Dow. I say that because here was the president yesterday on inflation. Listen carefully here. I'll get you to respond after this. If we make prudent multi-year investments, it breaks up the bottlenecks in our economy. Goods get to consumers more rapidly and less expensively. It will take the pressure off of inflation give a boost to our workforce, which leads to lower prices in the years ahead. 
So if your primary concern right now is inflation, you should be even more enthusiastic about this plan. Here is the line that will take the pressure off of inflation. Now, now what, you're cons what you have to consider in Washington is what's been proposed. Well, 1.9 was passed in March, right? They're talking about at least a trillion in infrastructure, then 3.5 trillion after that. That's over a six to seven month period, Carl, spending six trillion dollars. Is that smart economics now? No. Uh, the definition of inflation is too much money chasing too few goods. The idea that we're going to create this big pile of debt and somehow that's going to, quote, take the pressure off inflation, that gets you a failing grade in any economics 101 course that I, I can think of. And the idea that we're going to give more welfare benefits without requiring work and that somehow this is going to cause more people to work, that's also baloney. The president is selling uh, a, a bill of goods that the country cannot afford. And the idea that somehow or another government spending more money is going to somehow uh, diminish inflation. Go look at Argentina. Go look at any country in the world that suffered hyperinflation. Look, go, go look at, at, uh, at, at Tanzania. Look at all these countries and find out what is at the bottom of it. And that is the debasement of the currency by spending too much money from the government, creating mm. too much debt. I don't know, the stock market just seems to keep keep wanting to go higher. Talking to Kudlow yesterday, he said he would buy that market. Um, there are still some oh, pretty yeah. strong so, fundamentals so there. I, I, I have strength in the American economy. I'm losing strength in the, the administration's economic policy. Got it. And particularly the economic reasoning of the president. Yep. Noted. Thank you, Carl. Nice to see you.